In this video, I'm going to introduce you to Microsoft Entra custom authentication extensions and show you how they can be used to add external claims to Microsoft Entra identity tokens. The claim values may come from a SQL database, a file, LDAP directory, or any system of record. Let's get started. Okay, so you might be asking yourself, why would I want to add external claims to an identity token? Let's think about the purpose of the token. A user signs in to enter ID to be authenticated to a particular application. And what enter ID does is it crafts an identity token for that specific application. And that identity token, which could be a SAML token, or it could be an OpenID Connect ID token, proves to the application that the user is authenticated. But what if more information was needed? You might want to know, for instance, what groups the user was in, what application roles they had, and so on. In Enter ID, or as it was then called, Azure Active Directory, the information contained in a token was limited. Now you can add custom claims with the claim values coming from the Enter Directory. However, until now, there has been no easy way to add claims with values from external sources. This is in stark contrast to ADFS, where you have always been able to add claims from external sources. Let's start by taking a look at how ADFS added external claims. ADFS had a fairly sophisticated claims pipeline. We would have input claim stream, and those input claims could come from your on-premises Active Directory. They could also come from another identity token if we had federation between two ADFS servers. We then process those claims into an output claim stream that was used to go in an identity token that was issued for a particular application. And there were a fairly sophisticated set of rules. Now, one of the really great things about those rules is they could call out and extract information from external attribute stores. And an external attribute store could be an on-premises AD, it could be a SQL database, it could be an LDAP database, and we could also add custom attribute stores. Now, this capability has just not been in Entra ID until now. So now we have custom authentication extensions. So when our user hits the application and gets redirected up to Enter ID to get authenticated, once the user has actually been authenticated, we then start a token issuance event. And that token issuance event can call out to an API. And this is an API that we create. It calls out to the API. And what the API can do is go to any system of record. So a SQL store, an LDAP store, some custom store of some kind and extract information about the user. So when the call outs made to the API, full user information is given. We then, having retrieved those additional claim values, we then return back to Entra ID and say, please add these to the token. And we now have a fully augmented token with external claims, and that gets presented to the application. So that's how it actually works in Entra ID. Let's get into a demo. If this video is helping you learn, please help to promote my channel. Like the video, click subscribe and ring that bell to get notified. Okay, so this is my development environment and I'm going to be using various tricks to show you how custom authentication extensions work. The first trick I'm using is to actually go and get a token without actually having an application for that token request. So I'm doing that by actually 
going directly to enter ID with a URL. So let's actually just have a look at that URL. I'll grab it and we'll push it into Notepad just to make it easier to see. So there's my complete URL and I've got a breakdown of that right here. So I go to the authorize endpoint and what I'm really saying is please authenticate this user to this application. This application is the client ID. That's what identifies the application. I'm saying return an ID token. So this is using OpenID Connect. And here's my first cheat. I'm not, I've not got an application. So where am I gonna return this token to? Well, I'm actually gonna go and say redirect it to jwt.ms and what jwt.ms will do is actually display the token and the scope is open id so it's an open id connect token and i've got the state and the nonce values just set in as silly values uh, those should be unguessable random numbers but i'm not going to go into the details of those here so let's actually use this and use this to get ourselves a token. So we're gonna click the shortcut. We're gonna log in as John at 1.ad and we're signing in now. And what we're getting back is a token and it's come back, if we look at that, it's going back to JSON web token um, dot MS slash hash ID token. So it's coming back as a fragment and what jwt.ms does, it displays it for us, which is very nice. So we come down here and what we can see is we got our token back and inside this token are some external claims, correlation ID, API version, date of birth, custom roles. They've actually been added by my API and workflow. Okay, so let's have a look of that API workflow. Now, I could have done this as an Azure function, but I decided to do it in Pipe Dream. Uh, the reason I love Pipe Dream because you can create an API that you can call out to and you can see exactly what is being sent to the API. And it's a very nice test environment. I'm using the free version here. So I've created uh, an API and that's the API, that's the URL for the API. And then what happens is it's a workflow. So instead of just responding directly to the call to that API, I trigger the workflow and then I respond uh, by running some code. And this is a Node.js code and what it's doing is it's actually statically defining a number of attribute values. So API version is 1.0.0, date of birth. I've just called, put these values in statically, but of course I could be actually accessing an external database to pull this information. But you know, this shows it working. Now I've got a HTTP request that's coming in. And if we look at that request, we can break down the details of the request. This request has come from Entra ID. And the first thing is it's got an authorization header, which has a JSON web token in it, which authorizes Entra ID to call my API. My API and workflow do not actually validate this token in my demo environment. But of course, this token should be validated from a security perspective, and we shouldn't respond unless we're receiving a valid token. So I've also got, if I have a look in the uh, body of this thing, I've got under here uh, authorization context. And under that, I've got information about my user. So what Entra ID is doing is saying, look, we're just starting an issuance event for John Williams. Uh, we've got the given name, we've even got the mail, we've got the on-premise account name, we've even got the on-premises uh, SID and our surname, etc. So we've got everything to look up John Williams in an external data store. And then of course, what we do is having looked him up 
in the external data store, we respond. And we can do that by actually running some additional code for the response. Well, as I said, my response actually is statically defined. Okay, that's the API that Enter ID has called. So our next thing is to actually look in Enter ID and we've got external identities, custom authentication extensions. And if we have a look at that, in, we can actually see that it's a token issuance start, right? And what it's going to do is call this endpoint. Well, the endpoint is Pipe Dream. So we're going to call the endpoint. And we've also got um, an API authorization. So we've actually set up an application to represent our API so that we can craft a, an access token to that application. And we're then declaring the attributes that will come back from that API that we call. So correlation ID, API version, date of birth, etc. So that's declaring the custom authentication extension and what the extension will do. The next thing, of course, is to tell our application to use this. So we need to go into our enterprise applications. And although I haven't got a physical application, I've definitely got an application registered so that I can get a token. So let's have a look at that. If we look at single sign-on, what we've got here is the ability to actually specify a custom claims provider. So I've got in here, my custom claims provider is get token claims. And I'm saying that for my application, I want to take custom claims provider dot correlation ID. So that's, I'm gonna add that as a claim value. And I've got my claims defined and where the values are coming from. And the display name, I'm just taking directly from my tenant. So that's it. Thanks for watching this session to the end. Now you know how external claim values can be added to a Microsoft Entra identity token. To learn exactly how to configure all the components, watch the next video in the playlist. Please leave your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and keep learning. I'll see you next time in the cloud. Thanks for watching my channel. Subscribe for more free training. You might like to join me for my Identity Masterclass. Hopefully see you soon.